In this video, I'm going to go over an example of how to write a function in C that will take a string representation of a binary number and convert it to an integer decimal number. So this is actually something I've seen where I've had to write programs that take in a file that has number representations and things like binary or octal and have to convert it to decimal numbers. So let's make a function to do this. So our function is going to have to take in a string and return an integer. That part is not too bad. We can just say here int and we'll say like convert. And then we can say here car star and we can say the string. And so that can be our function declaration there. Now as to the actual algorithm of the function, when we go to make our function definition here, how are we going to have this function work? So let's look at how conversion works from binary numbers to decimal numbers. So if I have a binary number like this, 10101, we can actually look at each individual place in this number individually. And each individual place in this number is essentially two to the power of an increasing number. So we've got two to the power of zero for the first digit, two to the power of one for the second digit, two to the power of two for the third digit, and on and on. Now, what we're going to do is if the if the digit is essentially on because there's a one there we're going to want to add the value of that digit in decimal representation to a total that we're going to keep so for example with this number here this first digit is on so that's why we're going to say here okay let's add one to our, our total here because two to the power of zero is one and therefore this this is worth one and there's a there's a one here, so it's it's on, we can say, and we're gonna add one to our total. Now this next digit here is worth two to the power of one, in other words, two, but it's a zero, so it's actually gonna be worth zero. And then the next digit here is worth two to the power of two, which is four, and it's on, so we're gonna actually count that one, and we're gonna add four, and on and on, right? So this digit here is now worth two to the power of three, it's, it's a value of eight, and it's off though, it's zero, so we're not gonna add anything to our total. And then the last digit here, two to the power of four, this one's worth 16, it is on, so we add it to the total, we end up getting 21. So that's the way we're gonna carry out our conversion, is we're gonna start from the right-hand side of the number, and we're gonna go all the way to the left-hand side, and we're just gonna continually check to see whether the, the digit is sort of on or off. It's on if there's a one, it's off if there's a zero, we're gonna say. And if it's on, we're gonna add the, the total of that, the total worth of that digit to our sum total for the entire decimal number conversion. And that'll be a reasonably simple way of carrying out this conversion. So let's give it a try now here. So we're gonna say that we're gonna have some kind of string length here. So we're gonna have to have like int s l e n for the length of the string. And I'm gonna use a function called string length, s t r l e n, that's included in this string library here. So I'm gonna say number includes string.h. So strlen gives you the length of the string. So I can say strlen string. That'll give me the length of that string. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to write a loop that's going to go from the length of the string down to zero, the last character in the string. Now, because the strings are denoted with a null terminator for the, the end of the string, that's, where, that's what denotes the end of the string, I wouldn't actually want to go right from this position here because if I take a string length of say this string here, that's going to be that's going to be five, right? So there's going to be five there. But if I were to check say the string at position five, if I were to say like string at five, this is actually the sixth position in the string, right? Because we start from zero in arrays in C, so like string at zero is like the first character in the string. And then we would go string at one is the next character, string at two is the next character, string at three is the next character, and string at four. And then finally at string at five, this is where the null terminator would be. So I'm not actually going to go from the length of the string on downwards. I'm going to go from one less than the length of the string on downwards. So what I'll do is I'll have a, a loop here that's going to be kind of a reverse type loop here. So I'm going to say four int i is equal to, and I'm going to say s len minus one. I'm going to say until i, or I'm going to say while i is greater than or equal to zero, and I'm going to say here i minus minus. So I say a bit of a, a reverse loop here because a lot of times when we write loops in C, we're going from i being zero up until maybe the length of a string or something like that. But in this case here, I'm actually starting off at essentially essentially the length of the string, the last character in the string, we should say. And I'm going to go up until i is 
less than zero. At that point, I'm going to stop. So I'm going to go as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. And I'm actually decrementing i by one each time. So now what I can do is I can write my little algorithm here. So I'm going to say here int and I'll say total is equal to zero. And that's going to be the total number that I'm actually going to return. That's my actual conversion there. And then I'm going to have int and I'll say, I can say this is like the, the cur decimal value. So I could say like des value is equal to, and it's going to start off as one. And this is just keeping track of the value of this power to two in decimals. And what I'm going to do is as I convert from right to left, I'm going to continually multiply this deck value variable by two each time. So that way it, it continues to represent the current power of two as we go from right to left. So let's do the, the conversion of the first number here. We're going to say if the string at I is equal to one, then we're going to do the actual addition to the total of the current uh, decimal value here. So we're going to say total plus equals decimal value here. And that's, that's really it. And I mean, I might even be able to fit this here on the one, the one side here. So that's really it. And then I can just say deck value times equals two. So regardless of whether I convert it or not, the next time through the loop, I'm always going to want to increase the, 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 the value of, you know, the next digit here by multiplying it by two to get the next power of two. So that really should be it. And then I should be able to just return the total here. Okay. So we've got our conversion function here. Now let's actually try to convert this number here with some test code. So I'm going to say here car S one is equal to give it this string here. And then we're going to call this function here. So we'll call convert. We'll say int val is equal to convert and we'll call it with our string here. And maybe I'll call this val one in case I want to do another test. And then I'm going to say here, print F and I'll say S one in decimal and we'll say percent D and we'll just print out the value we get back here and we expect to get back 21. So let's give this a shot here, run this here and we get back 21. Now we could try some other numbers here just for fun. We could just try out some other numbers. So I could say S two, S two or Val two S two and Val two S two. And let's just try it. If we activate all ones, one, one, one here, let's see what we get here. And we get 31. And that makes sense because at that point you've got 16 plus eight is 24. Uh, plus four would be 28 plus two would be 30 plus one would be 31. So that, that does make sense. And we could just try maybe one more. So let's just try it maybe with only one digit activated and we'll try it with like a larger number. So let's try it with this. We'll say one and we'll say zero, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. So this is like an eight bit, eight bit binary number here with the one digit on the end there. And that one should be worth 128. It should be worth 128. So we should get 128. Actually, just to make it interesting, I'm going to do one at the one at the beginning here. So it'll be like 129 should be the, the answer there. Because like 128 plus one for the first digit should be 129. So we'll just give this a try here. Okay. And we get 129. And so we're confident that our, our function here to convert string representations of binary numbers to decimals is working correctly. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.